The 27th Breeders' Cup World Thoroughbred Championships, uh, once again a two-day affair. So we return to Churchill Downs. Just the first time it's two days at Churchill Downs in Kentucky. And day number one, well, we got off to a pretty interesting start. First race of the Breeders' Cup World Thoroughbred Championship day one is the marathon. Right. And in this particular race, we have probably some of the, the most shocking images we've ever seen, especially in thoroughbred racing with the fight between the jockeys that happens at the end of the race. Yeah, that, that's fair. Of course, personally, I was a little uh, upset because I, I picked Elder Fear but didn't bet him, of course. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how my gambling started uh, for, for, for the Breeders' Cup. But, but yeah, I mean, I mean, the fight that took place afterwards between Calvin Burrell and Javier Castellano, and Castellano, um, you know, nearly dropping yes. Martin Garcia, and it was an incredible, um, it was just incredible that Garcia was able to stay, stay aboard even. And I can understand that Burrell would be that upset. I mean, he definitely lost it. Oh, yeah, he lost after, it. After yeah. the race. But, yeah, at first I was like, oh, this is a black eye for racing. This is bad. But then I started talking to, to friends of mine that know a little bit about horse racing, and they were calling me about it. They saw it on YouTube. They saw it on ESPN. I mean, you know, any, any publicity is good, right? I agree with that. No one was hurt. I, and I thought the, the wild eyes of Calvin Burrell was such a shockingly different <laughs> image. Yeah, that was... I'm like, they're never going to let this man near the president again if he looks like that. Uh, but I think I, I thought was great about that fight, I and mean, this has nothing to do with the horse racing, about the fight was that Javier got that first punch in and Calvin never got a chance to retaliate. It's so true. it was the fight that happened in the jocks room afterward that we didn't get to see that was probably the real fireworks. See, the thing is the Breeders' Cup amplifies everything. And the truth is, and we all know this, that that kind of thing, that kind of aggression and barely concealed rage probably occurs every single day at every single racetrack because, oh, yeah. you know, jocks are doing stuff that is potentially hazardous around other riders. But to see it in that kind of an environment was a little bit startling. And my, my, my sources back there in the eastern part of the U.S. tell me that, uh, that Calvin <laughs> landed a few back in the jocks room. Oh, so he was able to even it up the score. Exactly so right. In, in the proper venue, you see. Right. That's where it should be taking place if that is going to happen. That takes place behind closed doors. The I can only hope that, for a future where they allow us to bet on the jockey fights, too. <laughs> You know, it's the thing that Maddie and I, we were together in the hotel room that night watching the news. Remember, oh, we right, sat there right, and watched right. the news. Yes. It was not that kind of party. <laughs> we were watching the news to see how the local news would cover an event like this, to see mm -hmm. if it was going to provide some sort of, um, I don't know, some sort of exposure for our sport. And it did just that. Well, it was, it was the lead story. They yeah. hardly discussed any of the races that took place that day. It was, it it was, was the lead it story. Was the and that was just the first Breeders' Cup race. Yeah, yeah. We still had to continue moving forward with day one and day number two. And the best thing about the Breeders' Cup World Thoroughbred Championships, Maddie, you can make ridiculous amounts of money just by being right one time. Yeah, I mean, Saturday we had the incredible performances. Yeah. You know, in, in the Breeders' Cup. I don't think we really had any on Friday. But from a gambling point of view, it doesn't get much better than five out of six paying over $54,000. Only, yeah. only on a Breeders' Cup day. The late pick four, courtesy of shared account at 46 to 1, paid 17000 on a 50-cent play. And your second biggest price was only was a 8 to 1, Dubai Majesty. You had one big long shot, 17000 the late pick four for 50 cents. I mean, that's the beauty of the Breeders' Cup. You know, one of the things that, that I always talk to people about who wonder why I don't play the Futures, and, and that's why I don't play the Futures for the, the Triple Crown races or the Breeders' Cup, you can find horses that you like on the day, so you're not betting on whether they actually get into the starting gate yeah. at, at very, very tempting prices. Well, in the, the pick four, I think um, it was 47 horses during the sequence. Yeah. The late pick four. So you're having, you're having 12 horses per race. That's ridiculous. And so for the better... You're just trying to be right that one time, and you can make, really make up for your entire year of losses, if there are any losses. You can make up for them on that weekend. It's also a good day for the casual fan, because let's yeah. face it, you, it's the best day to go and throw darts, because you're throwing darts and you're going to hit multiple grade one winners yep. that are paying $46. But would you agree with what I said a moment ago, Rich, about how, I mean, obviously, you win a Breeders' Cup race, you, you put forth a good effort. There was nothing that really blew you away on Friday on the track, was there? Well, blew me away, I, I don't know. I thought there were some very, very sharp efforts. I think they paled in comparison to what we saw on Saturday. And yes. when we come to the Ladies Classic, I think we did see a very, very strong effort from a horse who probably is not at the top of her own division. And that's why that race didn't get as much right. acclaim as it might have otherwise. Well, and the other black eye for Friday, we, we talked about the fight, which, uh, again, a bad, bad pun there, I guess. but. Uh, the life at 10 situation, which, again, I'm not going to talk too much about, but yeah. when you're the three to one second choice, there was over $300,000 oh, yeah. in the win pool on life at 10. And John Velasquez tells a national audience before the race that she's not warming up well. Then she breaks last and basically is eased up, not persevered at any point during the race. 
I mean, that wasn't uh, a good way to end the day. No, 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 that, no. no that, 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 that didn't look right, and I still feel as though we have not got the, the full story about Light at 10. I'm sure that there are a lot of folks who have some questions yet to answer about that, but I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. In addition to the safety of the horse, which is paramount, yeah. the, the betters need a certain level of protection as well. You know, we were going to save that for later, but let's go ahead and jump to that right now. The Ladies Classic is, is part of day number one, and it was probably one of the better ways to end day number one. That situation with life at 10 aside, under the lights, an yeah, outstanding field of fillies and mares uh, trying to navigate the situation under that conventional dirt track, and it ended up being an outstanding race. Yeah, and you know, I think that what it, what it tells me as a handicapper is that not only is synthetic not the same as dirt, but dirt's not the same as dirt. Unrivaled Bell was just not the same racehorse right. going those long one-turn races at Belmont Park. But if you if you liked her at Churchill, what you had as evidence of that was her game win over Rachel Alexandra, probably yeah. the highlight of her career in the La Troyenne. Now, the fact of Rachel's retirement maybe made us feel a little bit unsure about whether we wanted to wait that race accordingly, but but she really responded with a great effort, well handled by Kent DeSormo, yeah. and won decisively. I think exactly. we, we felt Zenyatta actually on Friday. You know, from, from a, again, from a betting standpoint, handle was up 9% yeah. on Friday. I think you had more people wagering on the Breeders' Cup this year, and Zenyatta was part of that. And the other thing is people like betting on dirt. People yeah. like betting on dirt than they They feel like they can synthetic. get a much truer sense of their form so, by looking at the I dirt. I think that's yeah. the main reason why you saw, I think, 13% for the, for the two days, handle up, 9% Friday, 15% yep. on Saturday. People like betting on conventional dirt tracks. We talk about how the betters can make things happen just on that weekend. Small connections can well, come to the big dance and really make their whole year. Well, Jamie Terrio and Brett Calhoun have been winning races in bunches for years, but never at this level. And it was absolutely with Dubai Majesty, their coming out party. They would win two races on the weekend, one on Friday with Dubai Majesty mm -hmm. with a, a great performance. But really, it was in front of that national audience, in front of that not necessarily exclusively racing audience, that they got to see the, the skills of Jamie Terrio yep. and the training prowess of Brett Calhoun. And I think it was very deserving, because these are two, these are two a jockey and a trainer that have, have put in a a lot of years, a lot of wins, and finally come out and, and get the, the recognition and the victory on that huge day. Same yeah. thing can be said for Awesome Feather Absolutely. and Stanley Gold, yep. who we're thinking, yeah. who, what is this Philly doing here? Yeah, she Jeffrey, Sa Jeffrey Sanchez here. winning a Breeders' <laughs> Cup race. You know? And they win it kind of easily, in hand. Well, yes, they did. And I think in retrospect, that tells us something about horses with two-turn dirt experience coming to uh, Breeders' Cup, where they're going to run the races around two turns. But then again, that, that's, that's Calder form. And I think we've seen a number of horses referring to awesome feather. We've yep. seen a lot of horses that have been sharp in those Florida Stallion Series races come to the Breeders' Cup, not make much of an impact. She's the exception, and uh, she looks very strong moving into her three-year-old campaign. Calder Dave, has produced yeah. good horses year in and year out. and they, great, they have a great two-year-old program. They have a Absolutely. great two-year-old program, exactly. And, they, and that's another thing. They don't they're kind of, you know, one of those tracks that don't don't get as much respect. But another thing, a, a human story, though, that I wanted to touch on that I think is great for racing, much of the way that you saw, hey, at least the fight put us on, you know, put us on the news. Yeah. Well, more than real, for Bobby Flay, here's a celebrity, someone who's well-known throughout America. People who have never seen a horse race in their life know who Bobby Flay is. Mm -hmm. And we're always leery of people who come into this sport and spend a lot of money off the bat because we're worried about them getting burnt out. So for him to have success yeah. on racing's biggest weekend at its highest levels is a win for all of us because it's, it makes it so he's going to be more vested in this. People he knows, people who have money, people who are you know maybe budding racing fans yep. will get involved as well. And I don't think that... People outside of the sport realize what it meant for us, for somebody to come yeah. in like Bobby Flay did and to be successful at that level. And I think that was really a, that was really a key moment for all of us. And I, I remember after that day, that really sticking out in my head because that's something, like we said, is going to get played on the news. That's something that's going to be exactly. on Yahoo.com and people are going to Google Bobby Flay and, and that's the story that's going to come up. And so that it kind of reaches over. It's a, it's a crossover to the mainstream. And you got to think it's something he'd be more willing to talk about Exactly. Than his recipe for creme brulee. Oh, absolutely. He would talk to you about his horses and his breeding. Well, and you know him, you know him pretty well. And I'm he, the guy, I'm the first guy he saw when he walked in the gates. I shook his hand like, yeah. hey, good luck today. So actually, that victory is credited to me. No, but I gave him good luck when I shook his hand. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Could, the <laughs> karma, of, here the karma of, your, of your handshake. <laughs> no, but, no, but you know him. His yeah. enthusiasm. Have you met anybody who has more enthusiasm yeah. for this game? He's into it. From an ownership standpoint, All from a way. gambling standpoint. I mean, he loves just being at the racetrack, whether he has a horse running in the race or not. That's true. And that's why we love being around him. Day number one for Breeders' Cup World Thoroughbred Championships. Some fans made a lot of money. Some small name connections made a bigger name for themselves. And some big name folks got a little richer. 